when I first adopted Happy, you know, one of my dogs, the fat lady. <laughs> we call her Godita. <laughs> Spanish for, you know, well built, <laughs> well built woman. <laughs> when I first saw her, she was in a small cage, yeah? And I don't know, I just say, okay, I come back for you. And when I came back, she was gone. She was not in a cage anymore. Nobody knew where she was. Uh, they all didn't even know where she was. You know, the whole staff didn't know. We had to go around the whole beak. You know, there was an American pound, dog pound. It's very big, and oh, thousands of them in there. We had to go everywhere, look for her. The only thing I remember about her, apart from others, was that she had the curly tail. You know, <laughs> but there were so many curly tails in there. <laughs> And so it was very difficult for us to to recognize. Not too many, but many enough. And so many different, uh, they house them in different areas, yeah? So we went all over, looking, looking. Oh, I almost gave up. I thought somebody took her already. and But I already reserved her, you know? <laughs> they didn't want uh, to give that day. But they said, come back. Because probably late or weekend or whatever, I don't know. I can't remember. And then when we came back, we couldn't find her. Oh, there was the panicking. And then we went around, 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 looking everywhere. And then uh, one of my assistants spotted her because of the curly tail. And they remembered her. But then he didn't even tell me anything. And I'd be still going looking around again. And later, at the, at the end, I was almost crying. And he said, I think I, there's a curly tail in that room. Maybe it's her. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? Why didn't you tell me? And then it was her. Because when she saw me, she jumped right away. You know, not all the dogs were jumping, only her. Because she remembered, I promised her that I'd come back, and she knew that. And of course, I recognized her when I saw her. Né? And she jumped, jumped, jumped all over the place, you know, trying to get out to me, you know, waking her tail all the way, you know. <laughs> and then when they broke her out, oh my gosh, she strangled herself against that uh, kind of the... They don't have a proper leash in the center, you know. They just tie a string around her neck and she almost strangled herself, you know, her tongue was coming out. But she wanted to jump, to, to come to me, just me. And the whole room was full of people, women and men alike, Asians, Americans, they all looked. It's not like I was the only one this size or this kind of race, you know. And then she only jumped to me because she remembered me. Just one word, just one promise. So believe me, they know. Okay? They know. You don't have to be a psychic or a dog talker <laughs> to understand their language. They understand you. They understand English, Russian, German, French, whatever you speak to them. They understand very well. Because dogs, they understand words by pictures. Yeah? Whatever words you speak, it forms a, a photo, a picture in their mind. And that's how they understand you. Perfectly clear and no mistake about it. Every language, every word has a symbol, invisibly, invisibly, okay? So that's why I also tell you, uh, be also pure in speech. Yes, because it does have an impact on the people who hear it. And it does have a real meaning. It does form a picture and it does send some energy, bad or good, to the environment that you're walking around in, okay? So that's why we have to be pure in speech and actions and thought as well. Yeah, everything has a reason, okay? I'm not trying to control you or anything. I'm just telling you all the scientific evidence <laughs> and scientific uh, logic behind uh, the precepts that we keep. Yeah? Okay, everything we think also forms sometimes a picture. The people can see it as well. Some people can, not everybody can. But nevertheless, it will be around in the ether, you know? and people can perceive it, and the energy does stay. Uh, it depends on how strong uh, you mean it at the time of saying it or thinking it. It will last longer or it will last shorter, but it will last. It sometimes it lasts for a long time, almost forever. You hear about the curse, you know, <laughs> from generation to generation. It's true. It is true. It doesn't have to be a witch to form this kind of curse energy, you know. It can come from some person with strong hatred or strong love or strong revenge um, ideas in his head. When he says it with all his mighty power, then it, it will come true. 
whether it's a curse or the blessing. Yes, that's why sometimes you come to a priest or some holy person and say, "Please bless me. Yeah, give me some blessing," because it does work. Eh? It's not superstition. Yeah. Uh, in uh, maybe in the future we do not need television or anything. We can just tune in <laughs> wherever we want, and the picture comes out. And that's what telepathy is all about. Dogs, animals, they have more telepathic power than we do, because we lost it. Many of us lose it, because uh, through the complication of survival network, yeah, we have to think too much in a, in a physical term, and do too much in the physical field, yeah, and think too much in the physical obligation, yeah, because of survival. So we are more and more physical every day, and that's how we forget the telepathic self, you know, the telepathic ability that we had. Some people still retain it, minimum or maximum or half-half. Sometimes you seem, in some instance, you seem to have understood what your partner was saying without he speaking it aloud. That is when you, uh, you know, collect a little scattered ability of of, of psychic power that you, you have. Yeah. Now and again it comes out. Yeah, and that is true. And can you imagine if we didn't lose it all? We have it all the time. Hmm. But it's also good in a way because <laughs> if you have that power, we don't always hear the good, but always the bad also. <laughs> and it will be, you know, it's a little bit too too much for us, eh? Yeah, too much. Yeah. Why do we talk so much about this thing? What else? What else is there? Yeah, yeah, talking, talking, keep talking. Then I have ideas for you. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, good evening, Master. Evening. Afternoon. I'm a new initiate. Oh. The second of October, I was initiated, and before I was initiated, I used to practice meditation anyway. Yeah. I um made a promise to Lord Krishna that if I was sent to True Master, mm. I would. <laughs> Do something, which is, <laughs> which is actually try and touch my master's feet. So, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> that is to to pay respect to my master. Now, master, I don't. Uh, um, big deal. <laughs> I I know it might not be a big deal, but do I have to fulfil this promise? No. <laughs> because it's been bugging me. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, all years I was thinking, okay, I might build a temple for the Lord Krishna or or to make a meditation house for everybody or something. Touch master feet. Oh, no, no. <laughs> My foot. <laughs> Are you Indian, by the way? No, Indian I'm not born. Indian. What that, are you? Um, I'm Jamaican. I'm West Indian. West Indian? Also Indian. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like reading the Gita. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. You're from West Indies. Okay, somehow Indian anyway. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling you what. The Indian people, when they see a respectable person, maybe a king or a good ministers or the priest or the monk or a Master of any kind that touch their feet anyway, by you know to show respect, yeah, and uh, that's that. So your promise is sounds like <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> My foot. What kind of promise? <laughs> no, it's just to show respect. If I was given a true master. Uh, I don't know. How do you know I'm a true master? So well, that's that's the question hanging in the air. In the air. I believe that you are in oh. my art. <laughs> well, what if you find another truer master tomorrow, and then you have to touch feet again? <laughs> Don't save it, huh? <laughs> no, no, you are the truer. Save it until you're sure. You've just been initiated not long, right? Yes. Okay, so save it until you're so sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you are. I mostly don't encourage people to do anything respectful to me. And most people, they want to do that. Number one, they pay respect. Number two, they get the blessing. So your promise is like a harvest. It's not like any, any, anything at all that I could feel pleased to give it to you. Yeah? It is your promise, not mine. I didn't promise Lord Krishna to give you my foot to touch. Did I? So I don't have to fulfill this promise, do I? No? Yeah. If you have some greater promise, 
oh, I probably will be, you know, impressed and I would help you <laughs> to fulfill it. But this kind of promise is, is nothing, no big deal. It sounds more selfish to me, right? Yes. So forget it. <laughs> some other time, you know, other day when you, some guy came and touched my feet, I let him. But not you. <laughs> Any other things? Yes. Give him the mic. Happy New Year, Master. Yeah, Happy New Year again. Yeah. Fine. And it's very good to meet you in person, finally. Yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you have any tips for when I'm meditating, how I can get the most, the best quality out of my meditation to make my meditation as deep as possible? Keep trying. Yeah. Keep trying. Practice makes it master. Hmm? Keep trying. Difficult because the world is too turbulent, there are too many things, you know, distracting us all the time. But the thing is not about success or not, it's about trying. Okay? Trying. That is training your perseverance, your sincerity. That's what counts, eh? That's what counts. Because God doesn't always pick up on the one who makes the most of the meditation, <laughs> but the sincerity. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. Just walk one step and the 99 steps will be met by heaven. Okay? Just try. That's it. Try your best. That's all. Okay? Try your best. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Yeah? Anyone else? I told you many times, yeah? Try your best to do your meditation and... If you want it to help yourself, then help others. Yeah? Help your brothers and sisters. Help to spread spiritual news. Yeah? That is the best to help yourself. Okay? Material help is not the greatest gift that we can offer to other people. Spiritual gift is the best. Yeah, sister? Somebody behind there? Or? Yeah? No? <laughs> yeah, 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 the blue one. <laughs> um, hi, Master. Um, I just wanted to say, firstly, you look absolutely beautiful, as always. <laughs> Very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> um, the makeup does help. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quite amazing to actually have you in real life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sitting in front of me. <laughs> so you think I'm not real, kind of? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a question. Um, Sometimes I have a little bit of difficulty in my concentration um, where sometimes I can concentrate better than others but sometimes where my concentration is scattered and I just wanted to know if you could help me um, to find the best way to try and concentrate better um, so that my concentration is more strong and mm -hmm. one-pointed because I find sometimes I have difficulty yeah. with that. I know, I know, I know. They all do. Ask them. <laughs> You're not the only one. You can say we. You don't have to say I. <laughs> you know, uh, don't worry. It just, the concentration doesn't always depend on you alone. Yes? Depends on what you have just eaten, even. <laughs> or whom you have just met. Or which television show you have just seen. Yeah? Okay. Or, or what magazine you have just read. Yes, it's like that. It's very tricky. And or wherever you have just been, you know, <laughs> the environment, the energy of that place. Yeah. It's, it's always like that. So just try your best, that's all I can say. Yeah? Okay. Try your best and don't worry, okay? You already liberated, believe me. The level above, so don't worry about it. All of you here, okay? Thank so you at very least third level. Yeah. <laughs> All of you at least third level, all right? All right, so you don't worry about it. Thank now, you very, very much. Now you can... <laughs> <laughs> don't have to run so much. Just walk, okay? <laughs> I love you, Master, with all my heart. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> love you too, baby. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being a good kid. <laughs> Thank you for trying your best. I know you try your best, and I'm very pleased. Cry with what? Happy or...? <laughs> okay. Replenish yourself with some liquid. <laughs> Otherwise you dehydrate. <laughs> Crying too much, <and> dehydrate. <laughs>
You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I sit there. Sit here, sit here, sit here. Sit here. Yeah, right here. Okay, just a little bit there, so I might be there, so she doesn't have to, you know, the camera, that's all. Anyone else want to cry openly? I have only one apple, okay? Apple juice. I have one more juice there. <laughs> yes? I did want to cry because it's been like... Um I knew you were here, but I couldn't be with you New Year's Eve. And right, I here. felt like I've climbed mountains to see you today. Oh. I feel like I've been to the Himalayas and back. <laughs> the turmoil inside. What happened? Um, just obstacles, family, I know, I everything. Know. And yesterday I went it. to the London Centre. I, I just dropped everything. I just had to go and then... You didn't come, so I thought, my God, this I is. I tried yesterday. I know, I know. I tried yesterday. Your obstacles and my obstacles. Yes, I know. Believe me or not, I know. I've been crying already yesterday for you guys. And today, I knew in my heart that you're in London, but I will, I would see you somehow. I knew. Yeah, that is good. I knew. Telepathy. I knew. <laughs> and then it's good. It's just I'm overwhelmed, and I'm in ecstasy. I. No, I've got no emotions, but yeah, I'm full of emotion. Understand, understand. It's, it's, I can't explain it. You know That's how good. I feel. Yeah, I it's know. just wonderful. Whew, yesterday, talking about it's, obstacles. Yes, I oh, know. I'm not telling you. I know. I it's, feel it. it's more difficult for me to see you than you to see me, even. Yeah. I have to swim also mm-hmm. upstream, mm-hmm. you know. It's I, not yeah, just you. I feel like I've climbed mountains <laughs> to be with you today. I climbed two mountains. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we both. Inside, I know, I know. I know. We both have to climb mountains to be with each other. Believe me, it's not that easy for me either. Even I'm already at the front door. If something would happen to let me have to go away, and I know your heart is aching, and that's why I cry sometimes. You know, I cry for you yeah. because I cry because I know your feeling, not just your feeling. I mean, I know the people, know. my oh, people's so feelings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand, baby. I've been crying almost all day yesterday. Yes, it's not for me, huh? Big I, sigh, I know. It's just <laughs> yes, in a while. Are you okay now? Happy? Good. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy. So I'm just new initiated uh, in October 2nd in here. And I want to... Thank everyone. So, mm. and happy New Year. <laughs> uh, I have a story, but it will be very. I make it very short. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm originally from Mongolia. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Hungary. Yeah. Yeah, and I came here because uh, I was I. Uh, is a girl uh, find a searcher or something like that? Did you search? Yeah, no, I I was, I like the story of the girl. Of the what? A girl. Arthur and Merlin. Yeah, as a grail. Holy, holy grail. grail. Holy yeah. grail. Yes. Yes. So, so you want to search for the holy grail? And <laughs> kind of okay. <laughs> and I, I came here uh-huh. two years ago. Ah. Uh. Uh, and I was sure that if I go to Stonehenge, uh-huh. I will, after that, I will find my master. Uh-huh. I mean, understand. I will meet with it's him or her. Teacher. Yeah, understand. And just three days, days ago, uh-huh. you went to I've Stonehenge? Been, I've been there, ah, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so it, for me, it's... Uh, miracle. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. The stone gives you the miracle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the Stonehenge has become uh, listed as one of the world wonders. It hasn't been before. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the world miracle. Before it wasn't there. It was not listed. Now it's listed. Good. Yes. You came on time. <laughs> yeah. So, about I... I I uh, always knew that I will meet with you he- here, ah, somehow. Wonderful. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Whew. She sure, huh? <laughs> you in Hungary? You want to stay here now? Uh, no, I'm living in London. 
Uh, but you're not in Hungary anymore? Well, I used to go, but I will go back. Well, I have friends. <laughs> you have friends there? Uh, uh, your family is here or in Hungary? Or in Hungary, Hungary? In Hungary. Okay, okay. Yeah. You speak Hungarian? Yes. Fluently? Yes. Just like the natives? Were you born in Hungary? No, I... Uh, How long have you been in Hungary? Ten years. Hungary. Ten years? Okay, yeah. enough, enough to speak. <laughs> uh, just in case I need you. <laughs> <laughs> For the Hungarian. Anybody else Hungarian need translation? <laughs> okay, any of you who are foreigners, who speak another f fluent foreign language, you know, apart from English, then you have to tell your contact person, huh? Just to remind him, because sometimes you have it in uh, initiation form, but he might forget. So in any center, you should post a list of some special persons. Handyman, for example, yeah, electrician. <laughs> uh, so we can join forces, you know, sometimes to do some work for the center or maybe help some people in need, you know, in time, yeah, special talents, yeah, uh, or maybe special language skill, yeah, and then we can need it sometime, you see, and with the contact number for the contact person for people to know it, you know. But don't keep phoning him and say, oh, I'm going to Hungary next year. <laughs> Please <laughs> go with me to translate or something like that, okay? Just use it for a good purpose, for spiritual purpose or for helping people in need. Understand me? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Right. That's good. Anyone else? Can I ask one more question? Sure, sure. I want to just know, if I want to retire mm -hmm. meditation, I mean, for for months. Oh, okay. Retreat. Uh, if I want to do it, uh -huh. uh, can I do it myself or I have to Where? At go home? in At home? some center? No, you can do it yourself. Uh -huh, because I'm planning to uh, go to Mongolia. Uh -huh. uh, there is some places I think I can uh, meditate. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> Try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why go back to Mongolia? You cannot maintain London. Well, uh, I mean, uh, mountains. Yes. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Caves and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the spiritual romance. <laughs> well, I must say it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, you. but sometimes it's difficult to stay there. People would always come and, you know, try to get you out <laughs> or something would happen. So it's difficult to stay, yeah. Sometimes you stay in the city, it's safer. <laughs> you can stay longer, you know, more quiet, more anonymous, yes. Because I told you I was in the Himalayas. Always some people came and found me out. You know, some psychics, some seers, some fakir, some fakir. <laughs> <laughs> so Fekia came and found me, yeah? And then <laughs> and I would tell him you <laughs> you fuck <for> coffee <laughs> But then some some other fakirs would come <laughs> and you can fight them forever, you know? Too many fakirs, <laughs> fakirs. I become a lot of fakirs, you know, traffic. <laughs> and even I tried to stay in a cave, you know. Still, somebody came and found me and made so much noise and trouble that I had to get out. They didn't make me any trouble, but if they kept coming and asking questions, then it was a trouble, <laughs> you know. Then you're not quiet anymore. Yeah. And then sometimes the police would come and say, Why? Why are you staying here? In India, it's different. You know, in India, people are used to this kind of long beard and blurred look and, <laughs> and some vegetable <laughs> next door, you know, <laughs> vegetable, uh, some kind of a twisted body hanging on the tree, you know. They're used to kind of things in India, yeah? Because that is a, a special land where people do that. I mean, it's, in India, people are born with the understanding that maybe after some certain years they will become a yogi, 
or uh, monks, you know, kind of, and go do some stuff, you know, or walk around naked or walk around not naked <laughs> and twist your body around or not twist your body around, um, hang your body on the tree with one leg or hang your body with two legs or, you know, all kinds of things that they already know that maybe they will do that one day. And the whole Indian people understand that some people will do that one day, you know, men and women. So they're used to it, and the police are not after them. But in our society, the so-called civilized society, if you do anything out of the extraordinary, or even stay in one solitary place too long, not the pilgrims come, but the police will come. <laughs> and then there you are, goodbye to your peace and tranquility. You understand? Because they will not understand what you're doing there. <laughs> yeah? And even if you say you're in meditation, ah, sect, belong to some sect. <laughs> uh, what sect? Uh, and then they might even think terrorist, <laughs> or extremist, anything, you know. People are so frightened nowadays, so frightened, because some extremists have been doing some things that are unthinkable. In their opinions, they want to voice their opinions, yeah? But then in... Most people's opinion is not the way to voice the opinions, <laughs> you understand? So therefore, if we do anything kind of a little bit out of ordinary and not usual, people tend to point it out and other people will come and check you out or the police will come or FBI, CIA, whatever. And then before long, you've been in the police cell. <laughs> and it's also a cave, it's also safe. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not always pleasant. And especially if you have inmates, you know, <laughs> who are more cellmates <laughs> than you are. Oh, you know, life is a little bit complicated. Yeah? So if you can, then you do that. If not, I suggest you just stay in your loft, you know, in the attic of your house. Yeah? And meditate in there. Hmm? You are more anonymous in a hotel than in a um, Himalayan cave, I tell you. <laughs> Himalayan cave may be okay, but even the Indian people, they go on pilgrimage all the time and they always dig the cave people out, you know. <laughs> Soon you will find a lot of people sitting in front of your cave waiting for blessing, if you have any. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they will bring all kinds of stuff in front of your cave. And especially if you grow a beard, the longer the better. <laughs> the longer the more holy, you know, <laughs> in India. And your hair has to mat, you know, the more mat, the better. <laughs> and your nails just have to grow long, you know. Oh dear, I can't imagine what you look like in a few years <laughs> in a um, Himalayan cave. Yeah. Anyway, not many caves are left because uh, all the Indian sannyasi, they occupy them all. Yeah. Anyway, it's very difficult to find a good cave. Yeah. You can, you can still can, but it's not all that quiet as you think, you know. All right. Who else wants to go Himalaya or some? Yes. Um, I'm so lucky to be here. Are you? Um, yeah, really yeah. lucky. I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, in this room with you, and uh, sorry. Um, also, you give us a magical New Year in England for us brothers and sisters. And I also thank you, the um, brother sister in the sari, to really Arrange help this. me a lot. Yeah, yeah. sure. They do. And um, especially my three sisters, and uh, help me, um, you know, um, understand, um, to teach me how's your teaching, mm -hmm. made me to understand, um, helping me through. Um, for the past year. So I'd like to thank you, all my brother, sister, and my, especially my three sisters as well. And thank, they you. thank you. <laughs> hmm? they, he thanks you, she thanks you, so. <laughs> Don't worry, say you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Okay. That is okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> good. It's good that you, you appreciate, you know, your luck. <laughs> Yeah, that's very good. Some people don't, you know. Yeah, some people don't. And that's just very good. That it you still know. doesn't feel real that sitting hmm? here with you. 
feel well. It doesn't feel well. Oh, it doesn't? <laughs> feel good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we're family. Then uh, New Year is family reunion time. Yeah? I couldn't make it Christmas, but New Year, okay. Yeah. Sometimes I can't, all right? Yeah. Oh, this was difficult to come see you. It's not about finance. I took care of it, you know. Airplane had sit, but even coming here already had obstacles. But it's okay, it's behind us already. You've seen me two times, some of you, some one time, okay? It's better than nothing, yeah. Well, we both have to cry it out, out and cleanse a lot of things, and then now we come. Hmm? But I don't like the crying part, of it. oh, it hurts. <laughs> and dehydrating, you know. <laughs> After yesterday, I had to go down to the lobby bar and drink a lot of juice, yeah, <laughs> to make up for it, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, sorry, you don't see me anymore. To dry up, you know. <laughs> Feel like a mummy. <laughs> Not a mummy, but a, a mummy. <laughs> dry, you know. <laughs> Any more? Any more love and nice story? Yeah, open that door, it's too hot. Open it wide so that the people don't have to be uh, screened by it. Open it to the wall. It doesn't? You open this door here. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. No, what I mean, open to the wall. It doesn't? Ah, the children. How many? How many children? Come here, this way. Cakes, candies. <laughs> Come here, baby. Animals, I have children. <laughs> Select them for me. Select all this. Select them. Bring it here. Yeah, put it here. The one with the animals. It says animals. Hello, guys. Where are the two big ones that take care of the young ones? <laughs> These two? Huh? And that one? Oh, man. You are heroes. Come here, heroes. The one that takes care of the small heroes. Come here. Some more food, some more other stuff. Not just that. Come here, baby. Put your shirt out like mine. Some other stuff as well. Here. Yeah, there you are. This is for you. Happy New Year for being such a good guy. Thank you. You're a good guy, good guy. Yes, I appreciate your sacrifice. Yeah. And the kid come here. All the kids come here. All of you. Put your skirt out maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Okay? Happy New Year, baby. Yeah. Okay. You guys can hang around. Uh, sit upstairs somewhere as long as you don't bother the the other saints. You all right? Yeah. Uh, Happy New Year. Come. Let them sit in one of the small rooms because there's some place up there, you know. And other uh, brothers and sisters can sit in the loft instead. Yes. You know? Yeah. Okay. Come here, kids. Kiddo. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. <laughs> Voila. Happy New Year. Voila. Yeah, yeah. Good. You guys are good. Good boys and good girls. There, sweetheart. Any more? You can sit around, okay? Sit wherever you can. Sit there, it's fine. Okay. Now you know why the Muslim temple was just all empty inside, not even a plant, not even anything. <laughs> <laughs> just like this, we try to squeeze as many as we can. Are you okay, cameraman? Yeah? This brother, come here, the blue one, athlete, come here, sit here, because the camera, yeah? Come, in the front. There you are. Sit with your sister. Yeah, there, there. Or in the corner, whatever. Yes, it's fine. All right. You okay now? Okay? Oh, good. Any more kids? No? No more kids? 
Okay. I tell you what. Give me that box. That box. This is for all the kids at home. Okay. If you have kids, you take some accordingly. Like if you have four kids, take four. Okay. Of course, I can give forever, but we don't have time for all these material things. Okay. Right. These are for the kids. Okay. Some more over there in case. That's for kids only at home. Okay. Some candy, sweet stuff. That one, the, the blue one, it's more, right? What is it in there? Candy, yeah, candy chocolate. The forbidden stuff, you know. <laughs> okay, it's for kids, okay? There. And the rest are for the big kids. Huh? That's for kids only. You go home. When you go home, you take some for them, all right? Because they're not here. Say, for me, with love. Mm. Symbolic. <laughs> Symbolic, yeah? Our family is too big for me to always buy presents, otherwise I would. Oh, and by the way, I got you some mint spice, you know? Mint spice, everybody has one. Yeah, got some more left over upstairs. Not left over, yesterday I sent a lot of them. Yeah. Many boxes. Okay, everybody has one pie. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I hope it's enough. You count it, you see? Like, you know, like, we have 100 people here, and you have only 50 small vegan pies. Then you divide it, half, half, okay? Half of the love is uh, better than nothing. <laughs> Half of the love, <laughs> love. <laughs> okay, right, it's good? Yeah. Okay, now I ask you a big favor. Uh, we have a break, okay? Are you hungry, some of you? Mm, tell me the truth. <laughs> hungry, right? Yes, yes, it's cold outside and it's been a long day. You eat? We come back later. But after you eat, you have to change, okay? Many of you, I mean, because we don't have room, so some of you have to go upstairs. So the upstairs people who sit in a loft, Himalaya loft, <laughs> can go down here. Understand? Uh, some of them climb on the loft, you know. And some sit uh, in the bathroom, whatever, okay? So we change, all right? Happy to do that? Yes. Good. And I'll come back later, all right? And we'll be around, okay? Yeah. I'll be around. Because here they arrange, I have a little room there, so I can also hide myself in the Himalaya, in the cave, <laughs> while you are doing your gymnastics. And then we see each other again, okay? And then we can meditate all that together, okay? Later. Yeah. Not always a questioning, but meditate, okay? Right. See you soon. Ah, this is a good center, eh? Good center. Yeah. See you later, guys. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'll give you a chance later, okay? <laughs> I'll give you a chance later. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, you can touch my hand, that's my promise. That's a blessing as well. What's it? Oh, thanks a lot. Mm, I always love it. Yeah. Oh. Jokes again! Wow. <laughs> nice. We have a lot of jokes. <laughs> squeeze downstairs. Yeah, Duh. you can go a little further. Slow, 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 slow. 
not the camera, not in between. Okay, let's just keep like that, but keep coming. Come in and going. <laughs> come and go, go and come. That's it, okay? And other people upstairs can, the, the one, the one here can go more up. And the, it depends, if you want. If not, uh, other people squeeze a corridor and everywhere, okay? If any of you want to go down, you're welcome. If not, just stay up there. You're welcome also up there. <laughs> okay. If that kid, huh? Or any of the human beings, just merely a physical body, you know, then it's not possible that he can think that way. You understand? There must be a soul behind it. There must be some driven force behind it, okay? Otherwise, an ordinary person under such a dire circumstance still can have such an upright spirit. And they're very proud, you know? They're not begging or anything like that. So the one of the mothers, you know, had a baby who was very ill, and she didn't have money. So she wanted to bring her She wanted to walk like 20 miles to the next hospital in town, you know, in a bigger city, to beg them to help her somehow, if they would. So the journalist, by the way, you know, give her and her baby the lift to town. And then the journalist, uh, one of the journalists, or the journalist also gave her some money for the baby, for the treatment. And she was very stunned. The native Rwanda islander was very surprised. She looked at her very surprised and said, your lift was good enough. They're really good people, very proud, very honest, so that they deserve help. Anyway, I, I did some help. Just just by the way, I tell you, yeah, normally I don't tell. Just this example, so that you know, yeah? If you just hold your positive spirit, miracles happen. Besides, even if you're so lousy and negative, <laughs> after you learn this quanning method, Miracles still happen. <laughs> so can you imagine if you're more positive, huh? more faith, how more powerful can you be? Okay? You bless yourself, bless your life, bless the whole world, bless the universe. Make miracles happen everywhere, wherever you walk. Understand me? Yes. Do that. It will happen. Okay. That kid, he's only sixteen and he talked like that. Yeah? The whole village doesn't talk to them and doesn't go near them because they're so poor. Say that they they will uh, not you know, be very lucky or not good or anything. But then he say, I will prove them wrong. <laughs> Work eighteen hours a day at sixteen years old to, to, to nourish the five brothers and sisters and grandparents, old grandparents. And he he says he's not afraid of anything. The only one he's afraid of is that he might get ill, That's it. so that he cannot work, you know. And meanwhile, still study something by himself, or one book that he grabs somewhere. And because of that spirit, miracles did happen. Only 30 pounds, you can buy a plot of land, plant vegetables, and be sufficient for the whole family already. 30 pounds only. Understand? So the money I send is, is more than a miracle. Yeah, more than 10 times that I send to him apart from sending for other people as well. So just the strong spirit like that, yeah? And it's not initiate, it's not anything spiritual, any special. He's just the one who concentrates on working to feed his family. And such a strong power like that could make miracles happen. <laughs> it is a miracle for him. The whole family needs only 30 pounds to be independent forever. And he has more than that. You know, for that country, for that situation, it's like a big fortune. Like you would win like 100,000 pounds all of a sudden. And all you needed was just like maybe 10,000 pounds. So that's, that is a miracle, okay? It's a manifestation of a miracle. And the boy, he earned it because of what he said, because of the, 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 the spirit of positivity in him, because of the sacrifice he made for his family, and so positive and so still so strong. That can make miracles happen. Hmm? So, how much more could you make, you see, in your lucky situation and the spiritual power that you've been given to and acquired and continue to develop so we can make anything happen with your mind power. Just think good for others, yeah? Do good to others 
and that's a miracle that you're making every day. You are the miracles, okay? You are the miracles for other people, for yourselves, for the less fortunate. That's what heaven is made of. What else do you think is heaven to that boy, 16 years old? Hmm? When he got more than 10 times what he needed for the whole family forever, what, what, else, what else do you think heaven would look like? Hmm? <laughs> what else do you think a miracle is? So we make miracles every time. Hmm? We make it with our hands because we earn money and then with that hand we can give life, sustain and power to some unfortunate people. Hmm? We comfort them with our thoughts, with our speech, with our loving kindness. These are all miracles that you're making every day. And I'm proud of you that you're doing that. Anytime somebody needs you, you give, okay? Surprisingly, in our societies, there are still some people who need us, not just in Africa, yeah? So we have a chance to do that every day. Maybe just uh, 50 cents to a homeless for a warm tea, maybe one pound for someone else, yeah, who is sick and couldn't work, something like that. Maybe just a cup of coffee for the neighbor when she couldn't get out. Maybe buy her some medicine when she needs to go to for the pharmacy and she can't. Yeah? Maybe just any little things. Okay? Because those are miracles. To some people who cannot get it, it's a miracle. Just like you, when you want to come here and you cannot, and when you can, you say, oh, it's a miracle. <laughs> Yes, miracles happen all the time. Miracles depend on what you need. Yeah? To you, a miracle is just to go and see some strange woman. (laughs) 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 Don't earn any money or have any, nothing. Maybe a vegan means pie, that's it. (laughs) That's a miracle. Big deal miracle, not just a small miracle to you. See? (laughs) But to that boy in Rwanda, yeah? A 30 pounds gift is a big miracle. And even more than that, 10 times, more than 10 times, 12 times bigger. And the amount he needs for the whole family, forever. At least for life. You know, to build the whole strong life. Maybe we open a business with that as well. <laughs> a big farm or something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, be able to send his brothers and sisters to school. Yeah. And uh, medicate his old parents, grandparents, things like that, you know, or help other people later when he becomes rich. It will go on forever. It's not just him. Because somebody helps him now, later he will help someone else. That is always for sure. He will never forget. He will never forget the day that he needed. And then he will understand the people who need. Yeah? He will not forget. Yeah. A person like that will not forget. So it's not like I'm just helping him or his family, you know, if we continue. The kindness will be breeding more kindness, and many people will benefit from that. And it's, it's a good way. This, this is how we live our lives, yeah? We breed kindness. We nurture it, and make it grow and spread all over the world. And that's how the world becomes better. Hmm? It does affect in many ways, not just spiritual way, but physical way as well. The things that you don't know. It affects the government, it affects the leaders, it affects the peace, it affects everything. You see now, so more and more people are vegan. Yeah? And the war in Ireland is finished. South Korea, North Korea talked. <laughs> For example, you know, many things uh, I cannot uh, even uh, remember sometimes. Uh, even the, the king of Japan, the emperor of Japan, just read a loving letter, like a sympathetic letter to the whole world, um, saying how sorry and how sympathetic he feels to the victims of the wars. He never did that before. Maybe you think it's because of economy uh, pressure or political pressure, but it has always been. (laughs) You know? (laughs) It's not the first time that any nation has any pressure from anyone else or any other country or from international power. It's not the first time the Japanese has that or any other country has that. It's getting better all the time. Of course, it's still cleaning. (laughs) Cleaning of the (laughs) astral. But uh, the rest will be fine and strong and get better all the time. Look at how far we have lived in all aspects. The disaster cannot help. That is the karma of the astral energy. 
But otherwise, whatever improvement, it just gets better and better all the time. Can you imagine before what you have now? Talking to a piece of square like that, hello, and then <laughs> the guy from the other end of the universe answers you. <laughs> and many other things. And you can uh, concentrate 1,000 songs in that small iPod. <laughs> Nobody knows where it comes from, so small. <laughs> huh? 300 songs, it's just a small stick like that, like a chewing gum. Yeah, see, powerful, powerful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, we can't even see each other from 100,000 miles away. Just by holding the square things in your hand, huh? <laughs> a video, picture, everything, songs, DVD, you know, the person at the other end of the club can see it like right in front of you. Just right in your hand only. That would be a miracle <laughs> hundred years ago. Or maybe even seventy, fifty years ago, right? Yes. Life is a miracle all the time. If you look, you see miracles, yeah? Just sometimes we take it for granted, yeah? And wishing, washing for something else which is just not really important or not necessary at all, yeah? Miracle is in your hand. If you go out, work with it. Miracle is in here. If you go out, work with it, you bring home miracles. And you can spread that miracle all around you and around the globe. We have miracle all the time. The whole body is a miracle. Just make use of it and make more miracles. Understand? If you don't use it, it's not much miracle, except you can see. It's good already. Don't wait until you're blind and think, my God, I had a miracle before. <laughs> Appreciate it. Every day, thank God. Yeah, thank the universe for the sustaining power so that the, the whole planet doesn't drop into somewhere, so that the sun even stays in the sky, so that the moon even comes out. Say hello to you every month on time. No clock needed. Miracles are everywhere. Huh?